is there any advice that you could give to agents or anything that you see some agents doing really well that maybe other agents could uh, could learn from or be inspired by? I have Eric Finnis Dahlstrom, CEO of James Edition, the world's largest luxury marketplace. And to those of us here in Marbella and real estate, we associate it with being the fancy property portal, if we want to say it in plain English. That's where the world's wealthy's eyes are, are focused on. Originally, as I understand it, started more as a, a more on the London signs of the luxury vehicles, luxury yachts, that sort of thing, and then and then gradually made the natural move towards real estate. So welcome, Eric. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. We spoke previously. I'll put the link to the previous chat up or down or wherever it is in this conversation. But one of the things I was going to ask you was, given that you have such a broad audience of wealthy individuals, which is a lot, a lot of the target market for for agents here in Marbella in particular, or the Marbella area. What's, what have you seen happen this year so far? So as you mentioned, we historically come from, uh, back in more than 10 years ago, from working with, with many other categories, not, not, not real estate actually, the real estate was not part of the site then. And then we've added real estate as the years went. And then a few years ago, we really started focusing on real estate. So we now, with a lot of focus on this, have seen very, very uh, rapid growth. So I think it's probably faster than the market. Uh, so it's hard to say kind of the absolute volumes of, of, of um, how the market is moving. But some of the trends we're seeing, so we, we this quarter, of course, Q1 this year, we, we've seen growth across more or less all markets that we are in. And then the biggest markets for us are, uh, as we are an international portal, but also very much focused on yeah, luxury, clearly high net worth individuals. These are very much often cross-border uh, transactions. So when we talk about markets uh, for the buyers, there's one set of markets, of course, and, and when we talk about the, 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 the listings, the properties, there's an, a, usually another set of, of markets. And, and if we talk about the property markets, then it's usually su Southern Europe, in, in Europe, so it's Portugal, Spain, Italy, France, Greece. Also a lot, we see Switzerland, uh, very popular this year and and if we talk about other markets then outside of europe it's, it's north america canada us and then uh, dubai dubai has of course been uh, especially maybe interesting this year because of some of the things that happen in europe and and there's uh, kind of been an option for many people from russia for example to go to to uh, to dubai and, and also buy property there and to invest or actually live there so yeah so very strong growth overall I think we're also still seeing a little bit of, I don't know if we can call it post-pandemic now or, or late pandemic effects, where people now can start traveling, they can start visiting properties. And I think actually a lot of people still have held this off. And um, we've had a very big growth, which is quite interesting, in, especially if we talk about the leads volume then that, uh, that has grown. It's mainly for, for uh, houses and villas, uh, actually, and not so much for apartments. That's almost flat year over year for us, at least, in, in this segment. While people then apparently still are looking for this kind of additional space and, and kind of want this, either if it's a second home or, or kind of a, a move to, to a location where they can have a little bit more space, maybe for working from home with the family, etc. So, yeah, we're still seeing those kind of effects. And I, I think... Uh, potentially, we'll continue to see that throughout the year. Yeah. So the the in in Marbella and uh, Costa del Sol in particular, are you saying that it's a similar pattern that you're seeing across the other markets that you're moving in terms of strength and performing well in the in the higher end of of things? Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, it was a little bit of surprising for us, and I don't know exactly the all the underlying. Uh, reasons uh, why it was like that but December uh, November December was uh, fairly slow uh, it, it was uh, I think there was 
a little bit, then, then there was a maybe more negative effect from COVID. There was still um, some restrictions. There were still talks about waves uh, and, and so, uh, second half of last year, while I think it was literally 27, 28 of December. So, so after Christmas, Leeds just took off completely and including Spain and including Costa del Sol. And it's been just growing, growing January, February, March. And I think that this is, this is, of course, a little bit more anecdotal, but when I talk with a lot of uh, people from Sweden, what we see there is that many people maybe had the opportunity to work remotely during the pandemic. Some of the Swedish companies are now saying, hey, now, now it's time to come back to the, to the office uh, because we, we still like to have people here, which means that some people might have to, or they, they are in that, that kind of decision point where, hmm, yeah, should I maybe start looking for for a, a work or a setup where I actually can be down here on Costa del Sol. And I, I still know people that are now looking to, 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 to create that setup and move. So I think for each month, we're still seeing this growth. And I, I think that is still a driver of, of pe- more people will actually start moving down. Um, so, so yeah, we, we definitely see it uh, for, for Costa del Sol as well as for, for other markets. I mean, you yourself are a good example of this, aren't you? As in your, your, the James Edition headquarters are in Holland, in the Netherlands. You were, as it happens, was, you were living in Russia. And about a year or so ago, you moved to Benahavis here in the Costa del Sol. And you're here full time, you're remote working. You're, you're a good example of, of, the, of that, of the Swedish business person that's uh, not necessarily working in the country that they're their their headquarters are how's it been for you this last year now that you've moved to the costa so how have you found it personally yeah so uh, for us then yeah we moved more or less yeah second half of last year and then it was of course very warm <laughs> compared to it was still kind of the, the difference then i would say compared to we moved from from moscow then was that of course in terms of Moscow is a metropolitan city. You have all the conveniences and so. I, I, I still think on on the kind of on that side uh, when we talk about Marbella or Costa del Sol as a, as a broader area, there are still a lot of opportunities when it comes to these conveniences that maybe a family with, with, with two people working have had in in a, in a bigger city, whether it's Moscow or Stockholm or Paris or London, etc. So so that is of course a, a period of adoption let's say to to an, a new way of, of living here but i would also say that it's kind of the little bit slower way of life or like you you enjoy life maybe more than, than just only work and the opportunities for sports for nature for restaurants for everything here is of course amazing and and and, and then usually the weather <laughs> uh, this this spring as i understand or like the winter let's say uh, took us a little bit by, by uh, surprise maybe but but it also makes you long more for the summer of course you you work with estate agents from all over the world as well as several hundred i would say from the costa del sol is that about the right sort of number yeah exactly yeah yep. Is there any advice that you could give to agents or anything that you see some agents doing really well that maybe other agents could uh, could learn from or be inspired by? Uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a great question. So when we look at, because uh, as I mentioned also in the beginning, we, as we're growing quite rapidly, we sometimes the trends that we see are maybe exaggerated when it comes to, maybe it's not the market. We think leads volume for us is growing almost 200% year over year. And I, I don't think the market is that strong. But, but what we can see is usually as a, as a marketplace where we connect uh, buyers and, and sellers or agencies then is the, is the differences between how uh, yeah, buyers work uh, between each other or, or agencies between each other work then. And I think some of the, the main things that we see there, and, and we're also putting a lot of efforts and growing that team that we, called, we call customer success then, but work literally with the agencies to in, improve their performance is, is that there are some things, not always easy maybe, but, but some things that always can be, be worked on. And I think it's hard to overstate the importance of good images. It sounds very simple, uh, but, but, but I think in that kind of 
reality now where people sit, and, and as we especially said, international marketplace, people sit at home, they watch on their computer, iPad, uh, phone, whatever it is, browsing through. Uh, the images are key and, and, and kind of we see many examples where it's either too few images. So it's, we have somewhere around 16, 20 images that there you have a kind of a conversion increase quite, quite a lot. So, so, so having that's the, the sweet spots, 15, yeah. 16 to 20 yeah, okay. uh, and, and above, then, then it's no kind of limit. I would say it, it never became, become worse, but, but, but like seven, eight images that some people have sometimes for, for especially these bigger properties, we less, it almost creates confusion. Why, why, why do I only see two bedrooms while it's five or, or, or things like this? So the, the number of images and the quality of them, and this is also this specific for James edition, but this is a ranking factor of use, image quality. Uh, so it, it's a little bit like a simplified Google mechanism we use for the, for the listings ranking. So it, we call it a listing score, and it's based on several parameters plus images then. Uh, so, so you also get more exposure on the platform. Also in terms of conversion rates, it's, it's a big, big difference uh, when you look at the image quality. And then if we look at uh, the, the second thing, I think that it's, I know it's, it's, it's uh, always a challenge to do this really, really well, but, but it's just the lead handling. Um, and I think we maybe even covered that last time we spoke. Like the, the time to, that it takes to answer a lead or answering at all uh, is a challenge. And, and that we hear uh, many buyers reach out to us after reaching out to agents and ask, hey, uh, what, what happened? What, what can I get and, and view this property or can I con contact the agent here? And that is, of course, uh, a pity many times because that buyer has gone through the whole journey, looked at the pictures or, or listings and search and filtered and all these things and come to the decision point that, hey, I actually want to, to know more about this. And then there's no one on the other end. And, and I think in terms of how agencies distribute resources, uh, these are maybe two areas when it comes to kind of listing or image quality, et cetera, plus the, the actual lead handling. Uh, is maybe not equally distributed to the effect it has because the, you can really beat other agencies on the marketplace with this and then you can increase conversion rate a lot when, when kind of uh, working uh, faster and, and, and more effectively with the leads. And, and I think uh, this is maybe something that is not always natively built into an agency. I mean, working with sales as it is then, I mean, lead handling and kind of taking a buyer through a funnel from, from the first contact to the viewing, to the contract, et cetera, is, is very, very difficult. Uh, and uh, there are many tools, CRM systems out there, but it's also a lot of work with processes, people, all these things. So that's not easy. And, and maybe th this part is not something we work with, but, but the, at least the first part is something we try to help out with this initial contact, because that is very important. There is a mentality in the high end that's different to the middle market and the mass market, which is the, the wealthy buyers behave completely differently to regular buyers. And I think sometimes we confuse what what is expected from a, a web lead versus what might happen at the airport when you meet them there for, for yeah. viewing. The second part and the research process will be very different. But uh, I, think, I think it's easy to fall into the trap to think that wealthy buyers are quite happy for you to take your time getting back to them. So if anything, it's the opposite. Um, I think perhaps what I've seen working in the in the market is that it needs to be fast but it also needs to be correct in relation to what they're asking about and that's where a lot of the ball gets dropped and notice that um the ex ceo of my move the property portal my move uh, marcus surtan a fellow swede also based in marbella or well, the marbella area has joined your team tell me about that yeah yeah that's a great time Marcus on board since late last year and he is he, he joined yeah, a few months ago and now leading a new part of the business where we kind of working with agencies then to improve these conversion points and also the, the service that we provide to buyers so this is uh, something I hope we can also tell a little bit more about later we're still in the early, early stages of, of, of launching this this new product then but, but really great to have him on board and of course nice to, to have a, a fellow Sweden Madea in the team I assume you speak to each other in Swedish or is it English? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it, 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 when, we, when we meet, yes. But otherwise, company-wide, yeah, we only have English and company language. I got you. And the, the portal itself, the, 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 I call it the portal, so apologies, I know it's a marketplace. But uh, the portal itself from a real estate perspective. So, so agents can subscribe to list-in packages. 
various different ones that you have. Are there any other options for, for agents if they wanted to increase their exposure beyond a package, a pack of 100 listings or a pack of 50 listings or, or whatever the case is? Yeah, and this, is a, this is a great question also. And I, I think here we have, so, so the main package we have, as you mentioned, it's kind of, we that we simplified it as much as possible. So you, you literally upgrade to a, to a paid uh, subscription. And there you get an additional exposure uh, for, for all your listings. And then we have, so that's kind of the, the basic option that m- most uh, agencies use, which doesn't require a lot of extra work in terms of handling that promotion. But then there are a lot of agencies that, that also want to get push either a specific properties or a brand and so. And then we have uh, mainly maybe our newsletter uh, with, with yeah, about 350,000 subscribers where we have the opportunity to push specific uh, listings or as, as some agencies also want to do, articles done that we have in our, our so-called journal, our blog. And, and that kind of is a combination then of, of that you integrate that article yeah, both on the site, which lives forever, uh, but also you have a push then in our newsletter. So then you can talk more about maybe several properties or your brand or a region that you want to talk about and so So. That's I think I saw, sorry to interrupt you, I think I saw just the other day one for uh, Panorama, they had a, an article about the Zagaleta with various different properties listed on your blog, true, true, which true, true. would have yeah, gone on, that sort of thing. So you can pay, if you want additional exposure, you can pay extra and get this sort of level of exposure, which combines both the blog listings and the, your mailing list. Am I understanding that right? Exactly, exactly. Any other packages or anything that, that somebody could do that is uh, willing to, to reach further? Or, or is that pretty much it, those two things, sort of a, a visibility listings package plus some sort of combination with, with the newsletter and the blog? Is there anything else? So we have we have some on-site positions as well, uh, which we call them the hero, hero spot, uh, which is this, when you go to the site, the, the, the big, big uh, banner on the top. That's very uh, effective if you want to have one listing with, with a lot of page views and also usually brings additional leads. Uh, that's uh, usually some, sold on a monthly or longer basis then. <clears throat> and then uh, we also have what we call a single uh, listing promotion. So that's in the regular feed. Um, so if I search them for Marbella or Paris or so and my listing is there, th- that, that listing would be uh, on top of the search results. So it's also to to drive additional traffic down to listings. And also a specific listing, I say. Okay, so you said you have some new things coming up in the pipeline. Is there any any hint of, of what that could be that you can share with us now, or is it top secret still? Uh, yeah, no, I can mention some things we've done this year, uh, which I think are quite interesting. And <clears throat> coming back to this, so we believe we have a quite strong position when it comes to, to luxury, international luxury real estate for, for a specific market. And, and then the markets where we are have a lot of international buyers, so we, we bring that traffic. But we also understand that uh, agencies work with many different uh, portals. Uh, so so we, uh, we integrate, of course, with, with different so-called CRM system or where they, they handle all the listings. And, and what we want to do then is kind of simplify the work as much as possible, uh, but still provide as much pos- uh, information as possible to the buyers. So what we've done this year, one thing is we launched uh, image recognition on the images so so now uh, because we some this, this comes back to the listing quality uh, and, and and the time it takes to fix listings of course and prepare them when you upload listings now on the MC edition we we go through all the images with image recognition and identify property features such as mountain view sea views golf views or, or fireplace or high ceilings etc and tag the listings then so that users can uh, either filter by them or at least have them information on, on the listing. So that's kind of one direction where we're working and we'll continue to launch some features this year to, to kind of help the agencies become better uh, with as little effort as, eff, uh, effort as possible because we really see that that has a big payoff for, 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 for kind of that conversion rate on the listing. So both for buyers to be able to find listings, which is kind of their main goal when they come to James Edition, uh, even if we have many people uh, also looking around. And, and kind of the agent not spending too much time on each specific portal and the institution being one of them to kind of tailor, tailor the listings. In the high end, general rules of logic in terms of the volumes of sales in the high end versus the mass market, the number of buyers is smaller, the pool of buyers is smaller. Um, the, the, so therefore, 
the opportunities and the lead volume that one can expect in the high end. And this applies to whether it be Google Ads, any portal, anything like that. It's a smaller pool of people that you're dealing with. Do you find, do you ever find that sometimes agents forget that and treat the leads from James Edition the same way in their minds with what they might get from Idealista or another more mass market portal? Yeah, from from two perspectives, maybe. So <clears throat> some agencies, when they join the portal, which is completely natural because they might work across many different portals, is they might have an expectation of like how many leads will I get, uh, which is from, from a few aspects, maybe, as you also mentioned, not the exactly right comparison. So the list might deliver more leads for sure. But, but then it's a kind of the, the price ranges is one thing. And the second is maybe the quality of those leads. So we pre-moderate all the leads before we send them forward. So we try to not send through, yeah, uh, fake oh, leads. So, oh, okay, so there's like a Mickey Mouse one, two, three type lead, which you get yeah. occasionally. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a fake lead in the true sense. That means it just means that somebody didn't want to leave their details. That wouldn't get through to the agent normally? You filter uh, that yes, out? So, so, so what we, if there is kind of spam, so, so I mean, there's different types of, of, of spam. It can be like, uh, hey, do, do you want to buy this uh, yeah. something, something from me? So like, then there are other channels to do that. This, this yes, is not for that. So we, we don't push that through. Or, or it's, yeah, it can be some scam or something like this. And then we kind of identify that uh, through different either behavior on the site or the context of the lead. And then it doesn't go through. But we don't, of course, we, we, we try not to, to be too harsh. So if, if uh, because we also see, this is, I think, also an interesting insight as well, that we see some really high quality leads coming through with maybe not what should be expected of an email address. As you say, like uh, something, something, one, two, three can actually be a very, very relevant lead. And, and we try not to discriminate on that because we, we both see that on our side when we sell to, to agencies or agents and talk to them that, uh, that people might have many, many different email addresses. And, and also when the leads actually go through that, that, that there is a real buyer behind this. So, so I think here it's also one takeaway that yeah, we, try to, we try to have a little bit high quality of the leads that go through and, and as much as possible distinguish uh, real from, from not real. But then secondly, the leads that go through, as you also mentioned, yeah, the, at least there should be a good attempt working on them because I think the expectation from an agency is like, okay, how many leads will I get? And then uh, when we review after one, two, three months, they say, okay, I've got this amount of leads. Uh, and then when we start going through them and uh, also providing them the list, here's the leads that you got. Many are like, oh, wow, I didn't see those leads. Oh, maybe we should have called that guy or this woman or that. So, so we see also that, yeah, maybe because of this mix of portals where some deliver many, many leads, Yes, uh, unfortunately, maybe uh, some agencies treat the leads in a slightly less effective way than they should. In the high end, particularly when it comes to lead generation, and that, like I say, applies to whether it be Google Ads or Portal or Luxury Marketplace or whatever. But in the high end, the the success failure ratio seems so binary, so complete success, complete failure, by the very nature of the volume of leads and the type of commissions that they can make from a sale that if I advertise with James Edition for a year and the last lead I get, I sell to, it's probably the commission is probably worth 10 years worth of James Edition subscriptions. If I don't sell to that lead, and it might even be my own fault because I don't answer, I'm on holiday or whatever, it's a complete failure. So there's like a, in the high end, I've always found that there is the added pressure that the, the success is so tremendous and so worth it because of the high commissions, but given the low volumes, it could be that that happens in the first week or happens in the last week or doesn't happen, would have happened on the first day of the renewal. I don't know if I'm explaining myself properly, that there's such a huge success failure difference that can be one lead in the high end that it makes it very difficult often for agents to to evaluate it or to even know how long to give it to evaluate it if you have a a lead to sale percentage through through a james edition say of five percent then you can do the math a little bit in reverse of how many leads it's going to take you to get that but but most people they want to be able to hedge their bets a little bit and go here and go there because they need to make some sales but in the high end like i say that the success of a sale 
of the type of property that's advertised in James Edition. It just takes one, and you know that you've covered yourself for the rest of the, the rest of your life with with James Edition or or any portal. Really, is that something that 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 is in your head a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a, it's a great question, great point, and and this is actually a lot of how we also talk to the agencies that like if, if there was a portal where you could pay uh, an amount of money, uh, even if it's very high, and you, you know that you will make sales of five, six million euro properties, then, I mean, no one would do anything else than be on James Edition, like, because it, it's still advertising that we're selling. So it's a probability that when you show your properties here, you might get leads that might convert. And as you said, there might be many reasons why those leads don't convert or it takes longer time than expected or, yeah, leads were not answered and so on. So, so, so of course, it's, 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 it's a probability game in some sense. But as you say, what we see uh, and, and when we formulate the price of a subscription and, and we usually try to exceed that in the value that we deliver many, many times. Uh, so I, I would say, I, I don't think actually compared to many national porters, we are even more expensive, but, but also the value that we potentially might deliver is, is several times uh, more valuable than, than that cost. Then we see that, yeah, it's about 5%, I would say. Some agencies didn't come back to us and say, no, we have more than 10% conversion. I don't know if it's if it's true or not, then we, we uh, not no good ways so of maybe checking that exactly. But but 5%, I think it's a, it's a good uh, benchmark. That means that you, yeah, if, if you get about 20 leads, you should probably make a sale. And, and if you if you don't, uh, then, yeah, then we, we start having that discussion with the customer success and looking through the leads, maybe seeing if, did we do, enough follow-ups. I know the, the American portals, they say that you need about, and this I think is extreme, but, but it can make sense to make up to 26 tr- attempts on a, on a lead uh, to make a sale. And that requires a lot of time. Maybe uh, that's, that's too much. But, but if you send one email with a standardized template text, y- yeah, it might make sense to make a second or third yeah. attempt. At least, so. I mean, I would say in the 10 years that I've been doing this, the, the average is what I would call a two and two. Two emails, two phone calls, and then mm-hmm. and on it goes to the newsletter database. That is not sufficient because your competition is going to do more. One of the parallels I find with the Spanish portals, with James Edition maybe, and that's very different to the international, the other international portals, is that if you notice the Spanish portals, they sell you visibility. They don't sell you leads. Mm-hmm. That's that's their communication process. They say, look, we have X amount of we have we got eyes on. By, the, by your target audience. What you're buying here is visibility, is access to this audience. We're not taking any responsibility on how many leads you get because that's on you. That's on your listings. That's on the quality of your photographs. That's on your follow-up. You know, we can try and help you, but really ultimately what you're buying is that visibility, is that audience and not buying leads, which is a very different pr- proposition. Whereas the International portals tend to, because they know that's what agents actually want is leads. They talk, they talk in the language of leads, which then creates a little bit of a rod for the run back, as you say in English, which is, I know you're talking about leads. I'm not having enough leads. It's your problem. It's your fault. And, and you have to solve this problem. Would I be right in saying that with James Edition, it's a similar situation with the, with the Spanish one that I'm talking about, where you really are buying into visibility with a particular audience that's very difficult to find normally and very difficult, difficult, difficult to target. And as much as you will try to support them with advice about the leads, it's really it's on them at that point. This was also a switch we did a few years ago um, when, when we started looking more at real estate that we, we, we want to step away a little bit from this selling visibility, which, which is completely correct to say. Like this is a typical way for the, for the big portals or the national portals because they usually have, if they are they often become almost like monopolistic. So they have almost all audience. So, so then you get access to that. While, yeah, we have, of course, access to a very specific audience, more focused on, on the higher end of, of the property spectrum. But we still want to, to take the discussion to leads. We, we feel it's our responsibility to deliver leads. And then we, of course, try to help the agencies. And we see big differences if, if the listing. But, but we also have, uh, with the listing score, if the listing score is too low, uh, we, we don't publish listings. So, so uh, there is a, it's a lower cap where we say, okay, th- th- this, <laughs> this will not sell, basically. And, and, and then we, we talk to the agency and we say, this, 
this, if it's set uh, part of the portfolio or half of the portfolio, such as we said, okay, it's better to publish these ones because these are great quality, relevant for our audience. And then we, we talk about leads. And, and uh, then of course it's hard for us to talk about kind of conversions or like sales, um, but, but um, uh, we, we try at least to keep the discussion to leads. Yeah. Okay, so in, in, in summary then, what, what I'm understanding is that you're saying that things that agents typically do well that gives them better performances is a little bit obvious, but it is what it is, which is that better images, more images, but that isn't just because that is more likely to generate a lead with the buyer. There's a side reason, which is which is also the fact that they rank better in your algorithm, so they'll appear more often. And now with the new tagging thing that you have with the images, the more images they have with the more things on it, the more tags it's going to get. So the more chances it's got of getting of turning up in, in someone's search results. Is, is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, this, this is a good uh, summary. And also what we see in, in general is like people that filter, I mean buyers, I mean, um, they, they are they are more prone to converting. So if you aren't within those filters, let's say that people won't see you or, or so, then, then it becomes more difficult to, to show up independent of, of, of listing quality. So it's exactly, it's a, it's a great point. Well, Eric, thank you very, very much for your time today. I know you're a busy man. And, uh, and thank you for, for explaining that. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for having me.